All right, it is time for an episode 19 of our Loading 300 Blackout series. And hopefully this one's gonna be a little quicker than the last. Uh, yeah, we'll keep this one under an hour. And the big reason why is all of our ammo is already loaded. I've got 80 pieces of loaded up 300 Blackout here ready to play with. What I haven't done to them is crimp them. And that's what this video is gonna be all about. This little die right here, which is the Lee factory crimp die. For 300 blackout, we're going to take this ammo and crimp. What I'll probably do, so I've got 20 rounds of each. Probably do five, I'll keep five to the side as ciders and do 15 rounds of each for test. And we'll do like a light crimp, medium crimp, and heavy crimp. And then just go out and shoot them, see if we see any accuracy differences or. I don't know, maybe they fly weird or something like that. So that's the that's the basic uh, thing we're gonna we are going to do here. The loads will sound very familiar. They're the same we used in the last video, which is where we were talking about dies. Um, we've got tell you what, let's look at the bullets. 125 grain SST on the left. That was shot in the last video. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna shoot the same load, 19 grains of Accurate 1680 with an overall length of 2.1 inches. The next guy is our new bullet. This is the new bullet. This is a 147 grain, like military surplus M80 type of bullet. These are pretty much the cheapest 30 caliber bullets you can find. Except a few, there's a few bullets out there for like 30 carbine that are cheaper and even plated bullets and crap like that. But as far as, you know, jacketed bullets, these are about as cheap as they get. I, I got these from Widener's for about 16 cents a piece. I bought 500 of them. So I have been fascinated by the subject of lightweight subsonics. You know, everybody shoots the 200s, 220s, you know, that size subsonic. I want to see if I can get this 147 grain bullet shooting subsonic because ultra cheap plinking subsonics is pretty much my dream, man. Like, I, you know, that's... That's what I use subsonics for, is go out, play with my suppressor, and shoot really quiet. Like, that's that's the fun in it. So the cheaper I can do that, the better. So that, that's what we're going to shoot here in this video. And I've already shot a few, kind of preparing for the bullet series that's upcoming, where we're going to really dive into this bullet and see if we, how many different powders we can get uh, to work with it. But my preliminary testing, I've done with 1680, accurate 1680, and I found that 11.4 grains... Perfect. Subsonic cycles the gun, runs great, so we'll see if that continues here in this video. So that's the 147. The next bullet over is our 168 grain AMAX, which is, yep, we shot that one in the last video. 16 grains of accurate 1680, overall length of 2.215. And the big guy on the right is the 220 grain Hornady ELDX. So we're going to shoot it with 10.5 grains of accurate 1680 and an overall length of 2.250. Does that pretty much cover it? I think it does. We need to get to crimping. And I think I had mentioned in the last video like what a uh, pain in the butt it is to get this die back to a repeatable setting. So I think that's what we'll try and do. Let me see if I can get a camera angle to where we can see down inside of this thing while it's in the press. And we'll talk about the problems with uh, yeah, keeping track of where you're set and repeating your settings and all that sort of crap. Alright, so this camera angle is a little bit ridiculous, but you can see there's our shell holder and here's the hole we're going to use. So, I'll tell you what, let me pop off the lock ring really quick. I want you guys to be able to see what's going on. So, the, the tripod is on the bench, so it's probably going to be bouncy and, and horrible, but... That's okay. You've dealt with worse, right? All right, ram up. And let's start screwing this guy in until it touches. Come on. There we go. Now we're touching. And... Eh, yep. That's about right there. Well, I'll tell you what. For those of you not familiar, let me show you. Let me go well down in there. You see those four pieces 
squeezing together that is where your round you know the 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 mouth of your case is going to be I tell you what, let's find the the maximum all right up here too much too much cam over I can't even get the, the press all the way down so let's take it down until all right that's not terrible let me try and go just yeah and that that is kind of terrible all right that would be maximum crimp if that makes sense that's as tight as those collets will come together and I tell you what let's do I actually want to use this side can you guys see that sharpie mark I just made probably not the ones that matter you will be able to see I think and I will mark the uh, the die so now I've got an index on the die and the turret that tells me that's where max is so I'll tell you what let's go all right there's one turn back and we're loose so about right there is where it, it, it it's touching the shell holder and I've taken up all the slack I guess you might call that finger tight which is not enough to move those if you, if you look at the collets they are not squeezing together eh, like if at all so let's mark that as absolute minimum so if we take basically halfway between maximum and minimum let's see what the heck that looks like that's about what I normally do and from experience I'll tell you that's not going to touch the case very much I'll tell you what let's hmm I'm trying to think about the best way to do this alright that we'll call that the halfway mark let's make some marks and then we'll go back to a normal view but you guys will have seen this and will be able to know what the hell I'm talking about whenever I say you know which mark I'm talking about about halfway between those guys and about halfway between those guys alright so we've got marks all the way from barely touches the shell holder to as tight as you know as far down as we can do it and still close the ram that's our adjusting range all right let's get a better view all right first thing i need to do is get the lock ring back on there so that was five marks we made on the press so let's let's seat a bullet or, or let's let's crimp one with each of those five settings and then we'll, we'll get a really good up close look at it and see I guess another thing you should check make sure that it goes back in and the, and the index lines line back up again I don't see why it wouldn't yeah. about right and that's what we said was max yep and that still feels like a good max so we went back in and our our holes are still lining up okay all right so I'll start at the first setting which was finger tight down to the uh, to the shell holder and I'll tell you what I want to use yeah if you notice the 147s had a cantilever, the 125s had a cantilever, the 168s and the 220s did not. So that's good. I wanted to test both with and without cantilever. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. These first five, I'm going to use 147. So like I can tell that that didn't even touch. So now I need to move up to the next setting. 
still felt like almost no contact. Third setting. This is kind of my normal light crimp. All right, next one up. There, we're starting to feel it. And then the last one is crazy heavy. All right, let me get these lined up and we'll have a quick look at them. All right, here are the heaviest three. And let's move a little bit to the left. And there's, yeah, there's the first two. So you can tell the bottom one and the next one up, I don't even think there was any type of contact. Whoa, easy there, killer. Easy. There we go. I don't see any marks where the die made contact. Let me spin these around. Yeah, pretty much nothing. That guy looks the same. Now this one is the first place we'll see. <laughs> Not really, right? Nothing visible. But let me go over here to the one. See if we can tell anything from the top. Not really. So even setting three. not really making contact. So our two heavies are kind of what we're what we're working with, yeah. Even that heaviest one, it doesn't look awful. You see a lot of factory ammo that kind of looks like that. I'll tell you what, I'm, I might try and pull out a piece of factory ammo here in just a minute and see If I can find one that's like that, but two heaviest settings don't look bad. So I think I guess those are the uh, huh? Should I test those two and then the you know the one below it? It's basically a very very light, almost no crimp. Call the one in the uh, middle me uh, medium, and then the one on the right heavy. Yeah, that's not so bad. Let's go with that. It's actually not as prevalent as I thought. I've, I've, I've kind of gathering up some uh, factory ammo for later testing. You know, hand loads against, uh, against factory ammo. And the, the Remingtons, yeah, like the, the cheap Remington UMC really has a distinct crimp. What I would consider pretty darn heavy crimp. And let's see, the other Remington is a little bit less, but it is there and obvious. Both of these bullets do have cantalures. One that kind of surprised me was this uh, American Eagle. It appears to have none. And the bullet has a cantalure and it kind of looks, you know, it looks weird. It looks completely uncrimped. So I guess it's like, you know, it's like anything else. There's going to be a mixture of, of different crimps here in factory ammo. All right. <clears throat> I think that's what we'll do. We will go with the last three. So the heaviest crimp is going to be our all the way as far as we can go. And then the two notches previous to that. All right, let me get all this crap put away. All right, so our die is still set on the heavy setting. So we're just going to leave it there. Do 
five of each. Let's see, we'll go lightest to heaviest. Yep, so that's the 125 grain SST. I'll tell you what, I'll do one of each and then show them to you. The 147 grain. Uh, let's see, that will be here. And now this 168 grain, this is the first one, no cane lure. So we are probably distorting the crap out of that bullet with a heavy cramp. And yeah. If we're gonna have problems, I'm guessing it'll be in on these uh, on these ones without the candler. But we probably won't have any problems. Yep, nothing terribly exciting. So I'm going to run through these guys. Get the heavy crimp applied and then just keep on moving down the line one notch at a time. So I guess our lowest one will be one quarter turn. Well, no, it's not really quarter turns, is it? You guys saw it earlier. You know what the hell I'm talking about, right? Alright, finished up our first set. So I'm just moving to the next mark over here. Which after seeing these, I think this I think this mark right here is probably gonna be probably gonna be the one. You know, a, a good crimp, a crimp you can see, like it's it's there, but not so much that our brass is gonna get eaten alive. Because that's really the, uh, yeah, see that. If you want to look, still distinctly there, but nothing crazy. I'd like to have a nice heavy crimp on my 300 blackout ammo, you know, just so I don't have to worry about bullet setback and that sort of crap. And an AR action is pretty violent you know I'd feel pretty good about having a nice crimp on my ammo but if you go too far then the mouth of your brass is chewed up you know and you're only going to get a couple a couple firings right before that mouth is in bad shape I'll tell you another thing I want to test today during this batch of testing so these 147 grain subsonics Right, they don't have as much, uh, for, for one thing, the bullets, you know, this is a freaking uh, much less aerodynamically efficient than like these big 220s, which are the other subsonics we're going to be shooting. So I'm curious how much point of impact difference there would be at 100 yards. So I think that might be what I do is, uh, as I shoot these... I'll leave the 147s for last, and I'll do the 220s right before them. So I don't know what you know what the hell I'm getting at. Maybe uh, I'll shoot the 147s with the 220 zero. So we'll zero to 220 for the 220s. Do the testing with those. Then I'll move on to the 147s, and we'll see just how much more bullet drop we get at 100 yards. Because that's really all that matters to me. If it's two feet. That might be unacceptable. If it's a few inches, then what the hell am I paying 30, 40 cents a bullet for whenever I can shoot 16 cents? That's kind of my thought. I'll tell you what, on these, let's see if this one's the same way. Yeah, it was kind of the same way. So here is that crimp. On the 167 grain AMAX, 
you don't really see it. So we know the same die setting with a cantaloured bullet made for a pretty distinct ring, but with this bullet, not so much. We'll see if it's the same way with the uh, with the ELD. I suspect it will be. have a look. Yeah, very little very little markings on the brass. Yeah, that might be that might be a really good setting. That one notch below max. It's not uh, doesn't seem to be too bad. Alright, let me finish these up. See you guys in a few minutes. Alright, that is it. The green box are our test rounds for siding and fouling and that sort of crap. And then these are the real test rounds. Five shot groups. Alright, let's get the hell out there and see what they do. Okay, same gun as last video. This is our 16 inch barrel with carbine gas, AR stoner barrel. And the rest, yep. Same as the last video. First five shots we're going to shoot are the 125 grain SSTs with very little crimp, with little crimp. So you see the target there, we got light, medium, heavy, and uh, yeah, top rows are 125 grain SSTs and second rows are 168 grain Amaxes. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I shot a couple rounds already to make sure, uh, you know, get our scope dialed in a little bit. So we should be pretty close. Let's see how they do. We're shooting at 100 yards. Did I mention that? Yeah, we're shooting at 100 yards, and as you might be able to tell, I am shooting prone, shooting off the ground. Last video, shooting on a kind of a slick uh, shooting table, and I was getting bump fires, so <laughs> this is me hoping to uh, remedy that. So let's get this first group done. All right, next up, medium crimp. All right, heavy crimp for the SSTs. You know, I should really be getting velocity readings, but whatever. I'm not in the mood to pull out the chronograph. But that's what some people say is that, you know, a good heavy crimp will help stabilize or uh, normalize your starting pressure. Because it takes, you know, similar force to get the bullet moving every time. So you get more consistent velocities. I don't know. We'll see. Heavy crimp.
right, we're gonna move right on to the 168 grain A Maxes. I'm not gonna move the scope at all. These might be uh, an inch or two off, but that's fine. My earlier testing, they seem to be hitting close enough to keep us on paper and keep us in the screen, hopefully. All right, light cramp. Okay, moving right along, here's medium crimp. Groups are seeming gross today. I thought we shot better in the last video. Eh, who, see, who knows? We'll see. As soon as I say that, we shoot a nice group. I should have said it earlier. Yeah, that's a really good looking group. All right, heavy crimp, 168 grain A maxes. All right, so far so good. Let me switch out the targets. We'll switch over to the subsonics. Okay, I think I'm on the paper. <clears throat> yeah, it was kind of a pain in the butt to, to get sided in, but we're gonna start with the ELD Xs, uh, 220 grain ELD Xs. These are the ones with the light crimp. Top left dot, Let's see what happens. Okay, next up, medium crimp. Eh, if I can find the mag well, there it is. All right, next up, heavy crimp with the ELDXs. All right, next up is our 147 grain Milsert bullets. This is the light crimp. No scope adjustments. We're just going to use the same zero as the last, and we're going to see whether these have a noticeable amount more drop because of their crappy ballistic coefficient. We shall see.
All right, medium crimp. See what they do. That one went super. Might have my hot. My, uh, might have my load just a touch hot. These are also thrown charges. All of these. So these weren't hand weighed. These were these were thrown with my with my RCBS powder measure. So I'm not expecting any you know miracles down there. So a, a stray super every once in a while on a on a load that's pretty close. I could live with that. Heavy crimp. This is it. I think that one went super as well. All right, let's go collect targets, see what happened. First thing, no function issues at all. Cramp, no cramp, light cramp, medium cramp, whatever. It all runs through this gun pretty well. So, yeah, let's look at the groups. All right, so that didn't go too bad. You know, the, the results weren't exactly super dramatic or anything, but it was... Uh, Feel pretty good. Tell you what, here are the supers. I should probably take a picture of this and then just put the picture on. Yeah, whatever. Screw it. 125 grain SSTs, inch and a half, 1.56 inches, 1.95 inches. I would say that we didn't see anything dramatic here. No like shift of point of impact. No massive change in group size. I think, you know. I think there wasn't a whole lot of difference. If we move on to the other super, the 168 grain Amax, 1.97 inches, 0.68 inches, and 1.14 inches. Same as up here, I think, well, other than to say, like, that looks like a pretty crappy group. Like, it didn't even try to group on the ones where we had uh, very little crimp. So that might be significant, but... That middle group was outstanding, 0.68 inches, probably a fluke. And then this guy was 1.14 inches. So it seems to me like, you know, the heavier crimps are fine. So that super heavy crimp, which is about, like I'd mentioned, that's about as heavy as I would feel comfortable going with that die. Like that was a pretty hard cam over, you know, into the crimp. Didn't seem to be causing any major issues. I'll tell you, my plan is to use medium. It's always kind of been medium, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, I didn't have any good way to repeat the, you know, the setting to get a consistent medium. You know, I just kind of crank on a little bit, uh, look down in there to see how much it's closing up and call it good enough. That's no way to do things. So I feel like I've got a good method of indexing the die, and I feel like this uh, medium crimp is going to be it. Let's look at the subsonics. The 220 grain ELDXs, 1.6 inches, 1.68 inches, and then 1 inch, 1.09 inches on the heavy crimp. Similar thing, maybe a you know, slight point of impact shift, but not really. It, it was all kind of yeah, you know, in that general area. So not too bad, even though you know the the medium, which is what I want to use, was the was the worst group of the three of the three at 1.68 inches. That's still okay. The main thing I wanted to accomplish here was if if something was going to cause major problems, I wanted to know it and get it out of the way <clears throat> before we start you know the serious bullet to, uh, bullet testing that we're about to do. So I think I ha I you know from what I see. There's just not a whole massive amount of effect. 147 grain full metal jackets, 2.45 inches, 2.25 inches, and 4.03 inches. It didn't like that heavy crimp. 
and that seems to legitimately be like a just a crappy crappy shooting and the other thing these aren't worked up loads these are loads that I literally just pulled out of the manual pulled out of my ass and started shooting so I didn't I didn't know what to expect on the point of impact here because I haven't shot the 147s at 100 yards I mentioned I had uh, you know shot them a little bit before just to, to kind of check for you know to make sure I wasn't wasting my time I'm shocked that these are shooting so well at 100 yards I expected six eight inch groups because they're you know they're cheap bullets and not ideal for the application I was afraid it was going to go horrible but it didn't two and a half inch groups I'd take that all day long brother on plinking ammo that that you know 16 cent bullet so what are we looking at like 22 cents maybe or something like that per shot perfectly good enough and especially now that I know it shoots to the same point of impact as a 220 grain ELDX so at 100 yards at least that's just not enough time for the massive difference in ballistic coefficient to make a difference it seems I mean that, that's the way I read this I don't know shit about ballistics but that's what I that's what I take away from this couple reasons you want to crimp right I mean I think we've I was very glad to find that the you know the least amount of crimp the barely any crimp there didn't like outshoot the crimped ones by a bunch because we want to have some crimp we want to be able to uh, feel confident that we're not going to get be getting uh, bullets set back and that sort of crap so we don't want to like crimp the super duper heavy crimp you know you're distorting bullets and although we didn't really see any major issues except for the 147 grain which really didn't like the heavy crimp but the yeah I'm the medium is perfect the medium is just perfect right I mean nice and heavy there's a distinct crimp around that case mouth but it's not uh, not too bad and I'll tell you what I'll throw a picture up just to make sure you guys know where I'm talking about. If you remember, there was the, the mark that was full crimp, you know, heavy, heavy crimp, which was very heavy. And then the one right next to it. That's just, uh, I don't know, what is that? Uh, one, two, three, four, about an eighth of a turn. About an eighth of a turn off of uh, full-blown crazy heavy crimp. So I guess if, you know, the index wears off on my press. Maybe next time that's how I'll do it. Just take it down until it is just really, really uh, camming over hard and then back it off an eighth turn. Call that good enough. So, all right. I think that's enough for today. Enough for this video. I will see you guys next time.